Good evening, everyone. This is M. Chenet for Hi-Fi in the Low Light. Tonight, we're taking a look at the Fio Q5 Portable DAC Amp. The Fio Q5 is priced at $349.99 here in the U.S. and is available online from a variety of retailers. Now, the Q5 features similar hardware to Fio's X7 digital audio player in that it has a modular DAC and a dual AK4490 DAC chip section. You can swap out the amps and switch between different modules to get whichever suits your needs best. Now for listening impressions, I was using their 2.5 millimeter balanced amp module that also has the 3.5 millimeter single end output as well. Now, I also did my listening with two headphones. I used my modded Audio-Technica ES10 for all of my balanced impressions. I used my AKG K702 for all of my single end impressions. Now, what's neat is that the AKG K702, despite being only about 60 to 70 ohms impedance, did require that I use high gain. So it is a slightly more difficult headphone to drive, which is useful for a test like this because those of you using this as a portable will likely have a variety of devices such as super efficient cans like the audio technical that I have or harder to drive cans like the K702 HD 600 or DT 880 600 or 250 ohm. Now, before we dip into the sound quality, let's talk about the build and the overall functionality of the device day to day. What impressed me the most about the device was the convenience. Fio shipped this toy unit with a variety of cables, digital interconnectors, as well as a variety of cases and other gadgets that made using it easy from day to day. Now, I found that it paired seamlessly with both an iPhone as well as an Android device. I was able to stream with Spotify. I was able to watch YouTube videos through the Q5 as the DAC amp. I was also able to play local files from Neutron as well. So I had no problems with mobile compatibility. Additionally, the Q5 also features Bluetooth connectivity. In terms of size, it is a bit larger than some of the other DAC amps and digital audio players that I have, but the weight is fairly balanced. We have the volume knob that's here. It is in line with the chassis next to the power button. The backside, we have the 3.5 millimeter out, the 2.5 millimeter balanced out, and the input for data. The next side, we have the Bluetooth controls and options, as well as the charging port. This is a dedicated charging port. Finally, at the top, we've got the gain switches, the bass boost, the optical coaxial input, as well as the line out. So functionally, there's a lot that this device can do, both wired and wirelessly. It has a lot of digital input options, as well as three different analog output options. In terms of build, all of the buttons are seamless. There's no wiggle to play with any of the jacks. Everything works pretty well, with the exception of the volume knob. The volume knob is a bit stiff and it does wiggle up and down, which I was not a fan of. It's not seated in there as sturdily as I would have appreciated. But this is a touring unit. It has been through a variety of different hands and owners. So who's to say that if you purchase it and you keep it yourself as a single owner, in that situation, it may do better than this touring unit has. Now for the sound quality comparison, I listened to it with, again, a LG Android device. I did listen with an iPhone through Spotify. I also tested that optical input with my iRiver H140. Overall, I found that on the mobile applications with USB, the sound was sufficient. However, optical input from my H140 is what yielded the best quality of sound with this device, which is a bit strange because USB compared to that optical input Again, the USB sound was a bit soft, it was a bit diffuse, it wasn't quite as precise, it wasn't quite as vivid, it felt almost kind of stuffy. Switching to optical with the same tracks, the same headphones, the same volume, I do volume match, I found that again, having optical input lifted that kind of stuffy sound and resulted in a more vivid presentation. So the sound stage, the imaging was more open, more precise. There was a little bit more tactility. Transients, both ambient noise and micro detail were more apparent. Now transients are 
characteristics of the envelope so the attack was clearer the decay sustained a little bit longer the sustain of notes was a bit more clear and the release again kind of gently and softly faded into nothing everything overall was a bit better with optical which surprised me now the sound signature of the q5 it sounds it's hard to say that it doesn't sound like nothing but it kind of does in some cases it was kind of sweet Sometimes it was kind of dry. Sometimes it was a bit too wet. Sometimes it was a bit too rough. Sometimes it was smooth. Sometimes it wasn't. It really varied. I really couldn't pin down a personality from it. I did find that, however, the line out tends to be drier and a little bit more textured than any of the output options that use the amp. So there's that. Now, we like a sound signature that is not transparent but that almost isn't there now the problem though is that it is not it's not transparent like the jds labs ldac was that truly sounded like nothing and it was rather consistent my qualm with the q5 is that it seems fairly neutral but there are some quirks so there are some quirks where it sometimes isn't consistent with every kind of file format and every kind of track so I did notice that using Redbook through the optical, which is 16-bit, 44 hertz, was by far the most resolving experience, which is really stupid because typically going up to 2496 should be better. I didn't test the DSD, but again, I found that optical to be the best and I found that the USB performance was a bit inconsistent depending on whether I was streaming or doing local playback. So I can't say why. But again, the sound signature is for the most part fairly neutral. You should not expect any excessive warmth or excessive dryness. You just kind of got to play it by ear. Now, my favorite pairing so far was with the single-ended output into the AKG K702. With the K702, which is itself a well-detailed, well-resolved, but slightly smooth headphone, I found less variation. I found less of a difference with the different files that I was playing back. Optical and USB input is very, again, distinct, regardless of what headphone you use, but with a slightly softer, slightly smoother, but well-resolved headphone, there's less of that variation in the file formats. Again, when I switched to my modded ES10, a headphone that has gone through many revisions, the differences are more apparent. This is a headphone that is primarily focused on clarity above all else. This is the headphone that I use for my reviews because it is so crystal clear, because it is so consistently transparent and very revealing of the source. With that level of transparency, with really what I consider to be a top-of-the-line headphone, there were the different variations in the file formats. Now, going on to comparisons i did compare the q5 to my geek out v2 plus and to the shanling m3s both using the es10 balanced and the akg k702 with the single ended output overall i found that while the geek out v2 plus was a bit a bit a bit colder it was also more natural to say that it wasn't quite maybe as forward in the mid it wasn't quite as it was more consistent and it was not just more clear and more vivid. Again, it's very hard for me to kind of wrap my head around how the Q5 sounds because of how inconsistent it was. Overall, again, overall, the Geek Out V2 Plus with the green filter was a smidge colder, but also more natural, more spacious, just better resolved all around. Now, the optical performance with the Q5 wasn't far behind. When you factor in the cost of a device that can output optical into the Q5 versus the cost of the Geek Art V2 Plus, which is $499 by itself, I felt that the Q5 was performed well. Again, there's a convenience in owning it. There was support from FIO. The, the somewhat inconsistent file format is likely to resolve as the firmware gets some revisions here in the future, so I'm pretty confident that for a on-the-go DAC amp with both the digital variations, with both the Bluetooth, with the balanced and single end, that the Q5 is pretty competitive. But competitive if and only if you're able to use the optical input. 
Now again, comparing the optical input to the USB input or even the line out input of the Shanley M3S, the Q5 was better, distinctly better. It made the M3S sound a bit boomy and a bit unnatural at times. Here's the catch though. When I use USB input to the Q5, it is no longer as competitive. This, the sound quality of USB with the Q5 versus the Shanling M3S is very close. The gap is very small. So there's an increase in price with the Q5 plus the need of a processor, a storage device, and a interface. When you factor those costs in, USB performance with the Fire Q5 is just not competitive at this time. So at this time, if you're going to buy the device, I suggest you use optical. If you're just using USB, I think that you would get a better value from a Shanling M3S or any comparable digital audio player around this price point. I actually also happen to have the new Cayenne N5ii digital player, and it was a bit more resolving than the Q5. I didn't spend a lot of time, but I did a quick comparison and it was again, just a smidge better. Now the Geekout V2 Plus with USB, because it only takes USB, was better. In every instance with USB, the Geekout V2 Plus was better. It was the better device, whether we were doing balanced or single end. So guys, in conclusion, if you're thinking about getting the Fio Q5 at that 349 price point, if you can use the optical input, it is a very good device. It is competitive. The sound quality is quite good, quite resolving, quite neutral. It does have some software quirks that I do believe will be fixed with ongoing firmware support because Fire is good about that. They are good about addressing those inconsistencies with the firmware and patching it up. So the support from Fio, the overall impressive sound quality with optical, the wide range of inputs for when you maybe don't have your optical device, really make the Q5 in my book a good recommendation. Again, if you can use the optical input, the Fio Q5 is a device that I would recommend. Now, if you cannot, if you cannot use the, the optical input and you just have USB, I think that you will be better served with a digital audio player such as the Shandling M3S or the Cayenne N5ii. So all in all guys, I want to thank Fire for extending this unit to me. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please leave your questions and comments in the section below and have a great night.